In rural China, a typical scene unfolds at a large feast. As soon as a dish is served, it quickly disappears, snatched up by eager diners, leaving those with slower hands waiting for the next course to try their luck. These rural feasts, a common village custom across China, are grand banquets held for occasions like weddings, births, or funerals attended by family and friends. Typically, the host sets up a makeshift kitchen at their homes and hires chefs specializing in large-scale cooking. Freshly cooked dishes are first served in large iron basins, then divided among various plates. Ingredients are piled high before being hurriedly delivered to the guests who have been eagerly awaiting their meal. Originally intended as a pleasant gathering for friends and family to chat and dine, these feasts have taken on a different flavor in modern China. They're no longer just happy social events, but more like a competitive sport of food snatching, where every dish served is like the start of a culinary race. It's not just a meal, it's an all-you-can-grab buffet gone wild. In one instance, a man sneakily pockets cigarettes from the table, leaving a guest who was about to take one in surprise. In another, a parent continuously heaps food onto their child's already full plate, despite the child's protests. Why are you giving me so much meat? I don't want any! This guy had one job, to serve dishes to all his table mates. But surprise, surprise, as soon as he brings out a dish, it vanishes faster than a magician's rabbit, leaving him more deflated than a forgotten party balloon. Then comes the second dish, a roasted chicken. At this point, he just grabs a chicken and starts munching away. Not only is the dinner table turning into a food grab-a-thon, but now there's this trend of feast takeaway before anyone's even had a bite. Imagine this, a dish barely lands on the table and someone's already swooping in with a bag they brought from home. The other guests are sitting there looking quite annoyed. I haven't even eaten. Why are you all packing the food? What is going on? This table's guests are acting quite strange. No one is eating. Everyone is packing food into takeaway bags. This lady, with a little help from her table mate, packs a whole cooked fish into her takeaway bag, casually mentioning it's for her dog at home. But everyone knows that the dog is just a scapegoat. That fish is going straight to her stomach. To prevent everyone from packing up the food as soon as the feast starts, someone in the village cleverly uses the public loudspeaker system for making the announcement. Do not pack up the food. Don't just wait with your bags ready to swoop in as soon as the dishes come out. It's not fair to others who want to eat. At a wedding in Henan, a huge pot of stewed dish was completely swiped clean within a minute. Not only are rural feasts a battleground for food, but even the free samples in supermarkets are fair game. It's just a free sample, but someone decides to swipe the whole loaf of bread, which is pushing it a bit too far. On October 1st at the Bafangjing shopping center in Xinxiang, Henan, a giant cake was laid out for a four-year anniversary celebration, inviting customers to enjoy a free taste. A lady, without any utensils, just shoves the cake into a plastic bag with her bare hands, causing utter chaos. The staff tries to stop it, but are no match for this auntie, who ends up covered in cream. In Shandong, a similar scene unfolded at a mall opening where old aunties swarmed the free cake, grabbing it with plastic bags, turning the scene into total mayhem. And it's not just the aunties, everyone's in on the action at another mall's store celebration, where both adults and kids are grabbing cake with their hands. Of course, the most common battlefield for China's older generation is the supermarket. Whenever there's a sale, it's their time to shine. These folks, usually slow and steady, suddenly become agile, outpacing even professional athletes, all to snag a bargain. Today, there's a huge discount on potatoes at the supermarket, and the aunties are unbeatable, grabbing everything in sight, leaving nothing for the youngsters. In one corner, a group of aunties are tangled up, fighting over who knows what. The others outside don't even know what's being fought over, but they join in anyway, just because everyone else is. Two aunties go head-to-head -head over a bag of discounted flour, putting their all into it. 
And talk about dedication, before the fireworks are even done, two aunties are already scrambling for cardboard boxes, which can be sold for cash in China. A bit fierce, don't you think? Let the others have a chance too. Netizens commented that it's both funny and a little sad to watch. In 2021, Zhengzhou experienced flooding and a liquor store was inundated. Numerous boxes of expensive liquor were swept out of the store and looted by passers-by. The store owner knelt down, pleading desperately. Please stop taking my goods. I beg you, stop. During this year's Dragon Boat Festival in Chongqing, a community planned a rice dumpling wrapping contest. Unexpectedly, the rice for the dumplings was looted by local aunties, who packed and took it away. The staff, infuriated, ended up throwing away all the rice. But it's not just about food. Some farmers have even started openly looting crops from others' fields. In Zhoukou, Henan, Miss Wan contracted 82 acres of land to grow a Chinese medicine herb, Attractolodes. After suffering losses for three years, she finally had a bountiful harvest this year. However, her hard-earned crops were looted just as she was about to harvest them. Initially, there were stealthy attempts to dig up the herbs, so Miss Wan hired over 20 people to guard the fields. But at harvest time, about 400 to 500 people, mostly elderly, descended to loot the crops. The guards, unable to take stronger actions against the elderly, could only plead and try to block them. Their efforts, including those of Miss Wan, went unheard. A video from the scene shows a worker snatching a basket back from an old lady, who then sits on the ground pretending to be hurt. Miss Wan, sitting amidst her crops, cries in despair unnoticed. Finally, the police arrived and managed to drive the looters away with loudspeakers, but not before they left with their baskets full. Ms. Wan estimates the loss of about 10,000 kilograms of herbs, costing nearly 200,000 yuan. She lamented that she survived the natural disaster, but not the man-made one. Local village officials even tried to justify the looting, telling reporters that the people thought the harvest was over and were just picking up leftovers. In another incident on October 14th in Zhoukou, hundreds of villagers stormed a cornfield contracted by an agricultural company, looting the corn even as the police and village chief tried to stop them. Reportedly, the cornfield, spanning over 330 acres, was contracted by a facility. Initially, a few villagers were picking up corn left by the harvesters, which seemed normal. But suddenly, they started looting, turning the hundreds of acres of cornfield into a free-for-all. Videos show hundreds of elderly people, both men and women, even children, some with fertilizer bags, others with three-wheelers, crazily looting the corn. Shockingly, even the harvested corn stored by the owner was looted. They left with their pockets full. In addition to corn and herbs, farmers in Henan have also been looting peanuts. A peanut farmer in Jumadian, Henan, complained that he and a friend invested millions of yuan in Suiping County to plant peanuts over hundreds of acres. Every harvest, hundreds of villagers with bags would come to loot the peanuts, causing him to lose tens of thousands of yuan annually. I've shouted myself hoarse, but they just won't leave. It's out of control. These people are relentless. If you stop them from picking, they just lie down on the ground. They're not even from nearby villages. No idea where they got the news from, but they all rushed here. Harvesting peanuts creates a lot of dust. With the machinery operating, it's hard to see people around, and it's dangerous if someone gets hurt. It's not that we don't let them pick, we just hope that they wait until we're done harvesting. But they're mostly elderly women in their 70s and 80s, and it's tough to deal with them. If you try to take the peanuts away from them, they just lie down in front of the machinery and won't move. My friend lost over 10,000 yuan because of this. The man who was being looted said he would call the police, only to be met with a brazen response from the elderly woman. She confidently said, So what if you go to the police station? It doesn't matter. I have my connections there. What can they do to me? It's no use. The farmer, left with no options, tried to drive the looters away with his vehicle, but it was no use. Local officials turned a blind eye to the looting of the peanuts. Due to an inspection by provincial leaders, they were concerned that dust from peanut harvesting could dirty the leaders' shoes. They forbade harvesting during the inspection, therefore exacerbating the looting. 
On October 16th in Xinxiang, Henan, many peanut farmers reported that due to environmental reasons, they were not allowed to use machines for harvesting peanuts. Because of environmental concerns, we are not allowed to harvest peanuts, forcing all harvesters to stop. Look at how many vehicles are in the field. The leaders just have to say a word and we can't work, we can't harvest. Look at this situation. Cars parked at both ends, blocking the harvester, not letting us harvest. Village officials even blocked the path of the harvesters, preventing farmers from entering their fields. A woman, seemingly an official, said that leaders from the province were coming for an inspection. Farmers questioned, first they couldn't harvest on a sunny day due to dust concerns, and now were they expected to harvest in the rain instead? One farmer, who had contracted hundreds of acres of peanuts and hired many temporary workers was now unable to work and still had to pay wages. He was furious at being forced to harvest by hand instead of using machines. A young man in the video, outraged, spoke out against the local officials' actions. A township government in Henan has banned farmers from using machinery to harvest peanuts. It's said that because of an inspection by leaders, the dust is too much and they aren't allowed to harvest. The video shows workers saying that the dust is too much for the inspection and it could block the vision of passing vehicles, posing a danger. I want to ask, if we can't harvest on a sunny day, are we supposed to wait for a rainy day? I want to know, what's more important, the crops of the common people or the inspection by the leaders? Every autumn, when the peanuts ripen, farmers race against time to harvest. Peanuts must be pulled from the ground while the weather is good. If it rains, the soil becomes moist and the peanuts can sprout or mold in the ground, ruining a year's worth of work. Previously, peanuts were harvested by hand and transported home after being sun-dried. With technological advancements, mechanical harvesting is more efficient, but it also requires sunny weather for quick harvesting. Now, the local officials' refusal to allow harvesting due to the leader's inspection has caused great anxiety among farmers. Moreover, they have to hire guards to prevent theft, as their crops would quickly be looted. Recent incidents of farmers looting crops in China raise the question, why is this happening repeatedly? According to Chinese media reports, these villagers are not truly impoverished or starving. The main reason for their crop looting behavior is the loss of their land due to land transfers. In recent years, driven by land transfer policies and urbanization, many villagers have transferred their land to agricultural bases, companies, or individual contractors. While they receive certain fees or profit shares, they lose the opportunity to grow their own food or engage in agriculture. Furthermore, not all villagers find stable and suitable employment after land transfers. Some, due to age, health, or lack of skills, cannot adapt to urban life and work. They live modest lives on meager incomes. It's been reported that farmers' pensions amount to just over 100 yuan per month, insufficient even for basic living. In such circumstances, they may resort to looting others' property. However, this behavior is unethical and illegal. Fundamentally, this situation stems from the government's failure to fulfill its responsibilities and lack of basic care for the farmer community. It's important to note that not all these actions are driven by poverty. They are also influenced by the individual's backgrounds. Many of these elderly villagers, now in their 60s and 70s, were born around the time the Chinese Communist Party came to power. They grew up through historical events like the Great Famine and the Cultural Revolution. The traumatic experience of the famine, where survival was paramount, may have ingrained a habit of grabbing what they can. The Cultural Revolution, 1966 to 1976, a period of moral decay, replaced traditional values with extreme self-interest. As Red Guards, the most destructive force of that era, their daily concern was to struggle against others for personal gain, not caring about what is right or wrong. The Chinese Communist Party's extreme materialist propaganda also eroded people's beliefs in the divine. The virtues of benevolence, righteousness, propriety, wisdom, and faithfulness long cherished in Chinese culture have been lost. Decades of subtle influence by the CCP have made people increasingly selfish with a sole focus on money and benefits. Thus, while the low-quality actions of some elderly people are condemnable, they are also pitiable. As victims of their times, they were swept along by the currents of a turbulent era that taught them to be opportunistic and unscrupulous. The imprint of that time on them is indelible, and perhaps they never wished to erase it.